DVDs and Blu-rays have sort of gone out of fashion nowadays, but I still think there are people like myself who like to be able to quickly navigate to different parts of a movie. You can't do that without a menu system, and for that you need disc authoring software. One thing I always wanted to do was create the kind of menus you find on those created for movies. DVD Architect Studio is a fairly versatile application for authoring Blu-rays and DVDs, but sadly that's beyond its capabilities. By default, a button will consist of a static image that has a mask associated with it. When the button is navigated into, the mask will appear, effectively highlighting the button. The Enter button is then pressed on the DVD or Blu-ray remote, which causes the chapter associated with that button to play. Something like this. At the very least, I wanted to be able to create navigation buttons that move in response to the navigation buttons on the remote. This shows you what I mean. With regard to DVD Architect Studio, there is a sort of compromise. You can dispense with the buttons and have one button mask that will move when you activate the navigation arrows on your player remote. Like this. In this short video I'll demonstrate how to do this. Welcome to my 23rd tutorial. For this tutorial I'm going to use a simple flat image of two colours. This will make it easier to create the mask. If the background is transparent so much the better. If it isn't the image will need a little work doing on it. I'll be using GIMP to do this. I have a two colour image here I'm just going to load into GIMP. What I need to do is make the background transparent. So I go up to colours and look for colour to alpha. Now that's not available because obviously the JPEG hasn't got an alpha channel. So what I need to do is to go to layer, transparency, add alpha channel. And if I go to colours again, colour to alpha is available. Defaults to white, so that without me having to do anything has changed the background to transparent. Click OK. Go to File, Export As, Change the JPEG to ping and export. I can now go to DVD Architect Studio. We'll get rid of that and get rid of that. I'll now set the background of the menu. Right click, set background media. Now to create a default button. If I go to insert and click empty button then go to media Click text and image and select image only. Now I'll select highlight, style and click custom. 
Now I will select Mask, click the drop down and click Replace. Locate the ping that I've just made and click Open. Now the colour sets. I personally like to have a bright colour rather than this faint colour. So I will pick specify colours and click blend colours. Then go to fill colour number one, which happens to be the this colour. Click the down arrow and pull the transparency to minimum. Now for colour set number two, which is the colour that the mask will go to when the enter button on the DVD remote is pressed. We need to set that to blend colours again and set that to a deep colour other than the yellow that it is. I like to just put that at black and turn the transparency down. Regarding the fill colour, you will obviously need to make that a colour that will make the mask stand out from the background. Now you'll notice the sizing handles on the bounding box for the mask. If they aren't there, it may be because this icon is clicked. You need to click this icon to get it back and this will allow the mask to be sized. Go to transformations and make sure that maintain aspect ratio is set to yes. This means that changing the size won't distort it in any way. So I'll just pull this down to bring it to a reasonable size and I can click it and move it into position. Now if I right click this and select copy, click off it, right click and paste. I can now drag the copy into position. Now I need to line these two up. To line this one up with this one I need to first select that then hold shift down and select that. Then I can go to this icon here, which will align the centers of the masks. I can now go to the preview button to see what it looks like. You can now assign these buttons to chapters by using the action section in the normal way. Now as you've seen it's relatively easy to create custom button masks. As always if you found this video useful please consider subscribing to my channel and I welcome any comments you may have. Until the next time, bye for now.